Good morning! Welcome to ICTHIS. Thank you for joining our online service today. We are so happy to worship the Lord with you, and we are excited to once again feast on the Word of God this morning. Psalm chapter 147, verses 1 to 11 declares this, Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant and fitting to praise Him! The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Hallelujah. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Amen. Let's worship him together, church. Every chain will break, and every chain will break. His broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before. of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Sing it, church. Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God, our God is a lamb. sins of the world his blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb every knee will bow before him oh, no one can stop the Lord our God hallelujah no one can stop the Lord Almighty who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? There is no one, no one can stop the Lord, yes. Who can stop the Lord? Our God is a lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power. you 
Jesus, the Lord Most High. Hallelujah. Good morning once again. Welcome to our online worship service. Our study is still on the kingdom living. And we're happy that you can join us and continue to just understand and uh, apply everything that we have learned. And so let's uh, go to God and pray. Lord, again, we lift up to you this time, this morning, and everyone who is joining us. Bless our study of the word. May we have understanding and not only just understanding, but the wisdom to apply. And so thank you. And we ask you to bless each and every family and everyone who is joining us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, we are in this principle of kingdom living. For the past, I think, two to three weeks, we have been talking about how Jesus came to reestablish his kingdom on earth. And we have said that everywhere that Jesus is, or in, wherever he is, that's where the kingdom is also. And we are going to talk about that. Everywhere that we submit to his rulership, that is where the kingdom of Jesus is. At the same time, we are looking forward to the coming millennial kingdom in the future. So it would be very difficult for us to fully understand the principles of the kingdom because we are not in a kingdom. We are in a democratic system of government. So we just have to take time to understand so that we can know more or less how it is to live in a kingdom and what does it take to have a king and a king who has a domain, a territory, and how does it work? And so um, today we are going to learn about the king and how he operates in a kingdom. In fact, today there is a popular notion that uh, people are going to oppose any form of monarchy because of the uh, abuses and uh, oppression and all of these things that they do. And not only in the monarchies, but even in the democracy system. You know, people are having a hard time because of what people are doing. So when you look at it, both for the monarchies and the democratic system of government, we can see that the problem is not actually the king or the form of government, but again, bottom line, it is still the human nature in us. And so, nevertheless, in spite of all of this, we can see uh, Jesus came and he wants to reestablish the lost kingdom that goes all the way back to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26, when Jesus said, Okay, now I am going to give them the dominion over the garden, over the animals, and all living creatures. But we know what happened. Because of rebellion, they lost the kingdom. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God okay, made a prophetic gesture in saying that someday I'm going to send someone who will reestablish again the kingdom that was lost by man. And so here we are, even if you look in the life of Jesus, he was always trying to preach the kingdom of God. And he also wanted his disciples to do the same. So if you go back to the Old Testament, there was already a prophetic gesture all the way in Exodus 19, verses 5 to 6, if you can open your Bible. And this is God's motivation for trying to deliver the slave clans of Israel from the Egyptian oppression. And this is what he said. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, 
Then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. So right there and there he said, you will be for me a kingdom of priests. Why not just say that you are going to be for me a you know, a, a government of priests and a holy nation. He immediately said, a kingdom of priests. And then Isaiah chapter 9, 6 to 7, this is also uh, a messianic promise of the kind of government that will happen in the future. It says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Now he talks about the government. And the government will be on his shoulders, and that's the kingdom. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Then of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign. Now he's talking about, you know, reigning. Reign on David's throne. And it's a picture of a king on a throne. And over his kingdom, talks about the kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. And the seal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So very clear that all the way back from the Old Testament, it was already there. They were talking about a kingdom that is coming. And of course, let's go to Jesus, and he himself, when he was here, he talked a lot about the kingdom. For example, in Matthew 4, 17, as he begins his ministry, he said, from that time on, Jesus began to preach. And what was he preaching? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. In Matthew 4, 23, Jesus went throughout Galilee teaching not only preaching, this time teaching in the synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom. Matthew 5, 3 to 4. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 20. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom kingdom of heaven. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. So again, it's all over. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Matthew 6, 33. I have about 34 uh, verses here. It's all about the kingdom. Matthew 13, 24. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Matthew 13, 31, the kingdom of heaven is like the mustard seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. The kingdom of heaven is like the merchant and move on. Matthew 16, 19, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 16, 28, I tell you the truth. Some of you are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom, and so on, and so on, and so on. We don't have to read all of that. It takes so much time. And so I will challenge you to have a personal study on the kingdom of God. You will be surprised. There are so many verses talking about the kingdom. And one thing very, very interesting here is in John 18, 36. This is what Jesus said. He was trying to face Pontius Pilate there, and he said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. Then Pilate said, Okay, then you are a king. And Jesus answered, You are right. He declares it. I am right. I am. I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this reason I came into the world. To testify to the truth, everyone on the side of truth listens to me. He said, yes, I am the king, and I have my kingdom, and it's now here. So, 
we won't read the other verses, but the purpose for just reading that is really to show and to emphasize the preoccupation of Jesus while he was here. And so again, I challenge you to do a personal study and you are going to be so blessed. Let's go back to the time when Jesus declares himself a king. Now, he declares himself a king and not a president and not a prime minister and not a governor and not even a mayor. And this is where I want you to have that kind of understanding and to discover why did he do that? And I hope you can see it because this will somehow help you in understanding the real concept of a kingdom. Okay? Now, because it is the very foundation of God's plan for mankind, the original ideal concept is actually different from what we see in the earthly version. There are some components that are the same and the concepts are there, but not entirely the same. So it's still a learning process para sa atun. For example, ang pamangkot, why did God choose a kingdom and not a republic like ang atun Republic of the Philippines? Why not? And so, anong benefits of being in a kingdom over a democratic form of government or a communistic form of government? Well, we need to answer the question then, what exactly then is a kingdom? In a very, very simple way, a kingdom is the government of a king. They're very related because kingdom comes from two words, kingly domain. Okay, and you cannot separate the two. If you ever have a king, that means there is a domain, therefore it is a kingdom, all right? So, more or less, this is what it is. A kingdom is the sovereign rulership, sovereign rulership and governing influence of a king over his territory. The king governing his domain impacting it with his will, impacting it with his intent, impacting it with his purpose, okay, from the king. Manifesting a culture, and that's the most important part. He wants to establish a culture in that domain, which is reflecting his nature as a king, reflecting his values as a king, and even his morals. So, that's how to describe a kingdom. For example, kita sa Philippines, uh, several years ago, three centuries ago, a Spanish explorer was sent to the Philippines. And in honor of the king of Spain, King Philip II, they colonized us. Again, the word colonized comes from a kingdom uh, language. They colonize us so that the king of Spain can introduce here to us in the Philippines what he wants. And so he sent, of course, no other but uh, the very famous Ferdinand Magellan in 1521. And so they came and they established their colony here. And of course, we were able to practically get a new culture. That is why La Mesa, Tenedor, Cochara, Bintana, Fiesta, Siesta, Dina na Tananagalin, of course, from Spain. So again, colonized, and so we became a part of Spain. So that kingdom in Spain has been trying to impact a culture sa aton. And that is coming from the king of Spain, King Philip. Therefore, we become Philippines. Because the very heart of any kingdom is the king. Masyado ginaka important that we need to understand that. In the kingdom of heaven, 
in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus is the king and his will is everywhere in heaven. In the same way that when God extended his kingdom authority to this earth through man, he created him in his image and released to them a rulership to rule in his name. Ang problema lang because we rebelled against the authority of the king and we lost in a rulership. Therefore, that's the reason why Jesus has to come to earth and also to reestablish the kingdom. At least, more or less, my idea na ta. And it is also good to understand that only a king can establish a kingdom. And that's the reason why we can say that Jesus is indeed the king because he wants to establish his kingdom. And only a king can establish that kingdom. Okay? Now, in every kingdom, there is a constitution. For us, the constitution of the kingdom of God is the Bible. Okay? For the Philippines, we have a constitution. The Republic of the Philippines also has a constitution. Now, in John 18 that we have just read, for me, this is the clearest statement of all, where Jesus, just before he was going to be executed, has a revealing exchange of words with Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and he was falsely accused, illegally tried, and wrongfully condemned by the Jewish religious authorities, and now Aratnashes to Bangani Pilate for judgment. And I love the conversation because they said, well, he calls himself the king, king of the Jews. So being the governor, Selene Pilate, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. He was talking about the kingdom of heaven. Silling ni Pilate, then you are a king. And Jesus answered, you are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. Wow, katahom. Because here, right away, Jesus himself was trying to declare, I am the king. And if I am the king, my kingdom is with me. So, siling niya, my kingdom is not of this world. And my kingdom is from another place, emphasizing, well, you are right. I am a king, and I also have a kingdom. And he was talking about the kingdom of heaven. And then Jesus said that his kingdom was not of or from this world. Wala mo siya that his kingdom was not in this world. So, makita nga, even Jesus himself was trying to declare, I am a king, and I have a kingdom. And that's the reason why I came. So, the Pilate tried to push further and uh, plainly what Jesus was saying, I am a king, I came to this world to testify to the truth. And ano ina nga truth? That he was a king with a kingdom. So, kaklaro naman si no? He's really a king. The one that you are serving is the king. So, because I am a king and my kingdom is here. And that's the reason why makasiling siya. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is here. That means wherever Jesus is, because he is a king, ang iyang kingdom is already there. Ang nanamian ko gid pagsiling yang everyone on the side of truth listens to me. In other words, 
because you are the child of God and from the very beginning you were given that rulership, that domain, that the, the you know, all the way in the Garden of Eden, but we lost it. So all this time, we have this spirit of dominion. And every time you will listen about the kingdom, it will resonate in your spirit. Something will speak to you. Yes, I have this kingdom consciousness because this is how I was created. So when you listen to teachings like this, and when you read this in the Bible, it should be able to speak to you. Okay, because natural lang na sa aton. There is that natural search for dominion. So that is as far as Jesus is concerned. Again, we said that the king is central to his kingdom. And if that is now true, kita man, because we were called for this kingdom, not only now, but for the future, then we should be able to get ourselves ready in understanding how does it work in a kingdom and how do we relate to a king? How do we behave? How do we talk? And you know, how, how do we relate to one another in the kingdom of God? Well, first of all, repeatedly over and over again, Siling Natonya, a king is the central component of his kingdom. Without a king, wala man siya kingdom. Ang duta yara, malang na da, huwag mo na siya pulos kung wala na siya king. So, amoy na ang primary distinction between a kingdom and a democratic state. Ang ato niya nga in democracy, we call our leader the president or sa iban prime minister. And they are not the center of the government. The center of the government in a democracy is the constitution. In the kingdom, the center of government is the king. His word is the law. His word is the government. So the king is the ultimate source of authority in a kingdom. So in the kingdom of heaven, the authority of God, a king, is exclusive and it is absolute. In other words, his word is law. His will is carried out to the Father's place of heaven. And that is ang iyan nga realm. Okay? So very important. Whatever the king says, no one can contest it. It's the law. Because he is the king. Very, very important. Sa aton yung form of government, ang aton nga presidente, Pwede na ito madibate, madiskusyon, challenge, But in a kingdom, you do not do that because he is the king. In other words, if you are in a kingdom, I'm sure in other countries they have a kingdom, and you go there and people ask you, what do you think of his pronouncement, the king? Maybe what you can say is this. What I think, yeah, does not matter because I am bound to follow my king and because my king says this, I agree with my king. Not in a democratic form of government, I put in a debate, put in a discussion. But in a kingdom, whenever the king speaks, wala na yan may makakwestiyon. He is the authority. So in the case of God, we can say that God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Or God said it, that settles it whether I believe it or not. So amuna siya ang dako ang diferensya between a democratic form of government and a kingdom. Okay? Now, to understand further about a king, he is sovereign. And the sovereignty of a king is inherent in his royal authority. We do not make a king sovereign. A king is born sovereign. When Jesus told Pilate that he was born a king, 
he did not receive his kingship or his sovereignty from people. No. He was born into sovereignty. Anong buot sa yuron sa sovereignty? It means freedom from external control. As a sovereign king, he is free to do as he please. And he is not accountable to anyone in the kingdom. No one has the authority to tell God what to do. Because he is sovereign. And his sovereignty is absolute. See that? So, ini nga mga bagay, kabudlay sa ato mag because wala ta si maanad. And that is why it affects how we relate to him because he's supposed to be the king. Okay? So we call him the king but we don't really submit to his rulership. Okay, naanad kita sa atong form of government nga when the leader says this, we don't really believe him. Ma meeting pa na, ma discussion pa na, ma debate pa na. But in a kingdom, the king is absolute and sovereign. Okay, furthermore, let's learn. A king is never voted into power. Ang aton niya democratic form, may election kita, we put them into power by election. But you know, a king is born into power. Amuna, royal blood na sila So, they become king by birth. Ila na iya. So, ang ilang pagkahari is not given by men. Ara na sa dugo nila, ara na sa linya nila ya. Mga dictators, well, they rule by fear, coercion. Ang elected leaders nato niya rule by the will of the people. So, amo na ang dako nga difference. And Jesus Christ was born a king. He is a king. We did not make Jesus king. Nobody made Jesus king. And so, anong response to that? We acknowledge him as king. Do we do that? Do we understand in a, in a concept of kingship? Furthermore, a king cannot be voted out of power because it is by birth. A king rules for life. Hindi mo na siya mabutang si election and then kwa om siya nga pagka king. Ang ato niya presidente pwede. So therefore, kingship is a lifelong office. A human king pwede na siya mapalos by force or revolution. But he can never be voted out. Now watch this. The king of heaven reigns by sovereign right of creation. No one can vote him out of power. No one can dethrone the king of kings. Lucifer tried and he failed. Human empires tried and they all failed. Because Jesus was king before the world began and he will still be king after all of this will pass away. He is the king of all kings. Again, in Revelations 11, verse 15, this is a bold declaration. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. He will reign forever and ever. Ever and ever and ever for all eternity. Okay? So nobody, no man or woman on earth has the power that can remove Jesus as King of Heaven. Wow. I hope we understand that concept. Now let's talk about the authority of the King. An authority of King is absolute. That is why he is not the President, in the Malaysia Prime Minister. Ang mga presidente will still consult Congress or the Senate. Ang mga prime minister will consult the parliament. But the king's authority is absolute. 
kung ano ang ihambal niya, absolute authority na siya. That is inherent in his kingship. And the word authority comes from the word author. That is why he is the original. He is the author and finisher of our faith. So he has that authority because he was there from the beginning. He originated everything. It's almost like ikaw author sang libro. So you know everything. And it was you who started everything. In the same way, Jesus the King originated everything. Because of that, he has the authority inherent to his kingship. Wow, wow, wow. So, his authority is absolute. His word is the law. No one can negate ang iya mga pronouncement. No one. There was a case, uh, see the David, and he loved also the king of heaven. And he said something about the king's law in Psalm 19, 7-9 and verse 11. Listen. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. Now watch this. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. By them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. God's word is the law. Hindi mo na siya ma-islan, hindi mo na siya mabali. All we need to do is to obey. When you obey, there are rewards. When you disobey, may mga penalties na siya. Okay, now, a king owns everything in his dominion. Amo na siyang dako diferensya. Ang mga presidente and prime minister, they do not own their country. They are citizens like you and me. But a king owns everything in his domain. And that is why he is called the Lord. We will talk about that next week. Because Lord means the owner. That is why you natawag ikaw nga landlord kay may duta ka. Or may apartment ka nga ginaparkilan, ikaw ang landlord. So when we talk about the king, he owns everything. He is Lord. Because he owns all the domain. Okay? Kag, kung iya na iya gusto ihatag, iya na iya gusto manghatag sa gusto iya. Because a king owns everything. Tanawa, ano sila ni David? Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it, maskin ang tao, he owns. Psalm 50.10 Every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand Hills. Everything belongs to the Lord, including your life. That is why he is called Lord. And Lord means owner. So ang tanan-tanan, ginapahulam lang. Ang kabuhi ta, ginapahulam lang. Because he is king, he is Lord. So, ang iya sinaya nga law, ang decree, hindi mo makambyo. It is unchanging. Mga presidente, they change their decrees every now and then. Dictators do the same. But a king cannot change ang iya nga ginhambal. There is a case here in Daniel 6, 8. Because Daniel was a faithful servant during the time of the exile. Oh, the king Darius, uh, the Persian king. And so, ang iyang enemies wanted to kill him. And so, they persuaded si Darius to issue a decree for 30 days. Nga no prayers and petitions are going to be made to any god except to the king, Darius. And anyone who will violate will be thrown into the lion's den. And the decree, it says here in Daniel 6, 8, 
was a law of the Medes and Persians, which may not be revoked. Can you imagine? Even the king cannot take back his own words. And so, ano natabo? Daniel prayed. They arrested him. And they gave him to their king. And the king lain matsyagya because plangga iman si Daniel. But he cannot do anything. Ang ginhambal niya, hindi yan mabalik. So, Daniel has to be in the lion's den. You know the whole story. So, the point here is that even the king, once ano na ihambal niya, cannot be undone. Because it's perfect. So, the king of king, Jesus, everything that he said, It's absolute. It's the law. Isaiah 48. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Beautiful. Okay. And then, the difference is this. In a kingdom, it operates in the opposite manner where ang ato niya sa democratic form of government, we choose the leaders. The king chooses who will be a citizen. So medyo baliktad. In a democratic form of government, kita mga citizens, we will vote and choose our leader. Not in the kingdom. The king chooses his people. He has that authority. He determines the standard of his citizenship in his kingdom. Now watch this, what he said in John 15, 16 to 19. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as it is own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, and this is why the world hates you. So you see that? So Jesus the King chose us out of the citizenship of this world, and made us citizens of his kingdom with the full benefits of citizenship. You see? Siya iya ang nagapili. Now, this is also very important, the next uh, concept here. A king embodies the government of his kingdom. What does it mean? It means that wherever a king is, the entire government is also present. Whenever a king speaks, his whole government is speaking. So, ang ato niya, when the president travels abroad, the authority that was given to him goes with him, representing our country. Okay? So, the government does not travel with him. It remains here in the Philippines. So, ang government niya of the king lain. Wherever the king is, the government is with him. You cannot separate the king and his government. And that is how we know that the kingdom of heaven is here because Jesus is here. Wherever the king is, that's where the kingdom is. So if you claim to have Jesus and Jesus is with you, then as you submit to him, the kingdom of God is in you. All right? It's functioning there. Now, Matthew 18, 19 to 20. If two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Matthew 18, uh, 28, 18 to 20. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The kingdom of heaven is here. Why? The king of heaven is here. Where? In our hearts, in your lives, 
and He is living right there. Wherever He is, the kingdom of God is there. And wherever God is, His authority is also there. I know nga medyo bag-uni siya ng mga concept for us kaya ay tas ni maadad. But that's exactly what it is. And then, let's talk about the wealth of the king. The wealth of the king is measured by his property. So the larger and richer in resources a kingdom, the wealthier the king is. Why? Because the king owns everything in his kingdom. So the more that he has, the more that he can feel, I mean, can feed his people. So that is the reason why our mga kingdoms will never stop conquering other kingdom. Makapadako na sila nga, padako. Okay. So wealth is important in a kingdom. And what is important is that we have a righteous king in a kingdom and a benevolent king who will provide for everything the need of his citizen. Amo na ginatawag common wealth. In a true kingdom, the wealth of the kingdom will be common to all. So everybody is going to have the benefits of a righteous king. He will feed everybody. Okay? So kabalo man kita that there is no king that is richer than the king of heaven. Because he owns everything. So, okay, let's move on. What is important now is that we understand this concept. There are so many more, but inahinayon talang kay importante ni nga makuha naton because we need to slowly apply this in our lives. And a king. If he wants to do something like what he did para kay sa Magellan, if Magellan moves out of Spain and goes to the Philippines, he must have that authority. Okay? And it was given to him. And so he established it. This is for the kingdom of Spain. So that is a delegated authority in his name, in his behalf. So in the same way, Usually, the king would write a letter. Tawag nila na a royal edit. May official na da siya, seal, authorizes the bearer to act on his authority. So whatever he does, wherever he goes, pakita ilang na. And it bears as if he is the king himself. In Nehemiah chapters 1 to 2, well, Nehemiah is an exiled Jew and a contemporary of Daniel, and he was a cupbearer to the Persian king. And when he heard about what happened to Jerusalem, destroyed, he wants to go and rebuild the city. And when the king learned about the, re- the intent of Nehemiah, the king gave him permission to go, and gintagaan siya sang royal edit. Okay? Ang gintagaan siya sang, uh, sang uh, authority. And so the instruction was to all the keepers of the forest to give Nehemiah all the wood that he needs to build the temple. And then he was also given permission to pass all the territories and to all the governors and to all to grant him safe passage. So he was given that authority by the king. Now watch this. Do you know that authority was also given to you and me as a child of God? That is why you can pray in the name of the king. That is why you have the authority to cast out demons. God gave you that authority. It is a simple kingdom principle at work. Because the name of the king carries so much authority, it represents the king himself. And all who carry his name can operate in his authority. And sometimes, because we don't understand this, we don't know that we have that kind of authority. When God tells you to do something, he gives you that authority. 
And in the Bible, God has been telling us to do a lot of things. But we are not doing it. Maybe we don't understand that we have that kind of authority. Wow. See? Now, this is just the beginning of some of the principles that we need to understand. The last one probably is this. A king's citizenry represents his glory. In other words, the greater the prosperity, the greater the glory and honor that will rest on the king. Why? Because he wants to be known that he provides for everybody in his kingdom. And so kita naman niya, as citizens of God's kingdom, we are supposed to show the king what it is like to live in a kingdom. How we walk and how we talk. Why? Because ang kabuhi ta reflects the king. Reflects the mind of the king. Reflects the nature of the king. Reflects the character of the king who is loving, who is righteous, who is just, who is benevolent, who is compassionate, and full of glory. So Amuna, how we learn how to live in the kingdom will reflect the kind of king that we serve. Wow. Are we doing that? Psalm 37, verse 17 and 25. The Lord upholds the righteous. I was young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. You know what this means? In the real kingdom of heaven, wala tuya gutom. Wala tuya shortages, wala tuya crisis. If we understand kingdom principles, we don't have to worry. Our king will provide. Our king will take care of his citizens. Amuna nga, we need to understand slowly in the mga principles and concepts so that we can start living in this kingdom as we prepare ourselves for the coming millennial kingdom, that 1,000 years where Jesus will reign. In the meantime, nga rito di, intindihon tani ang mga concepts so that every time we do things, at the back of our mind, I am serving a king. Every time we pray, Lord, 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 we now have this, oh, he's the owner. He owns me. He owns this. He owns. Then there is that release of ownership. You know, can you imagine a pray ka, Lord, 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 and wala ka kinchinding, meaning sang Lord, is He owns everything. Pero hindi ka man gani, mag let go. Because there cannot be two Lords in one kingdom. Only one Lord cannot be both. So with this understanding, it can help you live a life in the kingdom. And thank you for just giving the time and I want you to go back and study these things. These are hinahina yung mga principles, but this will mean a lot as you continue in your journey in the kingdom of God. I hope that uh, this brings some excitement in your heart and simply learning among our principles, but it means a lot when you begin to understand kingdom principles. I pray kita. Lord, teach us how to live in your kingdom. And Lord, teach us what it means that you are Lord of all. So you are the king and you are the Lord. You rule and you own. We are your people. May we learn to submit to your rulership in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Indeed, we serve an awesome, powerful, mighty God. He is over and above everything in all of creation. He is the Creator God. He is the beginning and the end. 
He is a sovereign Lord, and we bow before Him and worship His majesty and worship His holy, holy name. The name of Jesus, to whom every knee will bow and to whom every tongue will confess that He alone is Lord and King. Church, let's take this moment now to just respond by giving God our thank offerings. As we sing this song, in your heart just say, Lord, thank you. Or thank you, Jesus. Whatever the Lord lays upon your heart right now, give the Lord thanksgiving and praise for that. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. Let's do that right now as we sing together.